Sashimwe Praise be to Jesus Ndabasuhuje mu izina ry'umwami wacu Yesu Kristo I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Ah ngira ngo hari hashize igihe ndahagarara hano I think it has been many days uh, that I haven't stood here Um kubera impamvu zitandukanye ziri mu kazi ndetse n'ingendo for different reasons, uh, work and travels included Ariko ndashimira Imana ko yatekereje ko ndo kwizerwa ikandareka uyu munsi but I thank God because, because he has uh, esteemed me to be uh, faithful and he has given me this opportunity. I thank God because he deserves all the glory. I thank him because he deserves to be worshipped. And I thank him because he has created human beings so that we might worship him. Uh, in particular, I would like to thank God for the worship team. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, sometimes you just sit here and you feel blessed and Ariko, it. but it comes from somewhere. There are some days they take, they come here while we are away. We thank them because they prepare for us. God bless them. Uh, uh, we are in this season of the year God has given us a powerful uh, theme he has given us strong and powerful words he told us to become disciples of Jesus Christ a disciple is someone who has a master or a teacher and you have a master or a teacher and when you have a master or a teacher, you need to learn from him. So for you to gain something from the teacher, you need to pay attention, you need to listen, you need to listen, and you need to learn from him. So that at the end you might be like him and also get what you're expecting from him. So today we are in a season where we are talking about so in this season we are talking about the parables of our Lord Jesus Christ and the parable we are going to talk about I will say that it's a very important one not because others are not important but I will say that it's the key to everything just like we are going to see it in the word of God it is a parable we need in our journey of transformation in discipleship. And that's why I encourage you to pay attention and to listen to what God is saying in such a time. So please open your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark. We are going to read chapter 4. We read from verse 1 to verse 13. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 verse 1 to verse 13. Jambo Benshi Chane Batera Nirahwari Ari Chochatumye Yichira Mugato Bugari Munyanja Abgi Charamo Abanubose Bari Muchivaya Chayu. You can read. And That's again, one. he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, the sower went out to sow. And 
And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. Izindi zigwa muka kukara kadafitu butaka bginshi uomanya ziramera kuku butaka butari burevuti. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Ariko izu barivu ziraraba. Kandi kuko zitari zifite mizi zirum. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Izindi zigwa mumahwa, amahwa, arararuka, araziniga, nizerimbuto. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Izindi zigwa mubutakabgiza, ziramera, zirakura, zerimbuto. Um, but other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Arababgirati, ufitamatku yumva, niyumvi. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Yehere Yabari Kumenawe, Nabo Nabo Chuminababiri, Bamusova Nuza Ibjuo Mugani. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. Arabasubizati, Mnebgeho, Mnahawe Kumenubgiru Gugami Giman. Arikwabo Hans, Ibjo Arikwabo Hanze, Bio Sebabi Giri Gwamumigani. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Araba suizati, araba bazati, mbese kwa mutazi vyu wa mugani, ndi migani yose, muzai menya mute. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Nami Yesu, duche ugufi. Lord Jesus, we are humbled. Turagusabje ngo, udufashe kumfa. We pray that you might help us understand. What we are talking about here is basic, is fundamental. But there is a reason why you brought it back to us. Help us understand. The last verse we read, you asked us a very powerful question. You said, if we do not understand this, how are we going to understand the rest? Holy Spirit, come and explain to us. Holy Spirit, come and help us understand. Let us be humbled and let you be glorified and exalted. It's in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. This is a parable of Jesus. And in many Bibles, it is uh, written the parable of the sower. And that's how we like to call it, the parable of the sower. But if you look at it, what is being said, you realize that the emphasis is not on the sower but the emphasis was on another thing that we are going to talk about now. Uh, the main point of this story is not about the bad hand of the sower that didn't know about where to sow where to sow the seed. The main question here 
uko bwari buteye is about the nature no of the kwi, soil no kwitegura kubwo butaka kwakira imbuto and the preparedness of this soil to receive the seed ijambo ry'Imana rya tubwiye ngo Yesu yaramaze igihe yigisha ngo yongera gusubira mu kibaye the bible say that Jesus had been teaching and then he went back to the valley nibaza impamvu yaciye umugani kandi yaramaze igihe yigisha i ask myself why he gave this parable why he ashora ko yaramaze gucisha mwamaso mu bantu i think he might have looked at the people who were gathered. Gathered. Ku ibintu mvuga abantu barabyumvara and probably he asked himself do these people Arangi understand what i'm talking about and then he said ubwo maze igihe mbabwira ibindi nkabona nibabyumva now that I have talked to them and they don't understand the rest, let me change. Let me tell them in a story form or parable. But the first I'm going to tell them. The one who will understand it, the one who gets full understanding it, and who will apply it, they'll also understand the rest. He told them there was a sower. Ngo yasohoye imbuto. He took out his seed. Kambanze mbabaze. Let me ask you this question first. Harya ijambo ry'Imana rya tubwiye ko Yesu yari hehe. Uh the word told us told us that Jesus was where where was he? Ngo yari mu kibaya. He was in the valley. Abona abantu baraje asanga ni benshi. And so many people coming there were numbers. Abona nakomeza guhagarara ku nkombe. He saw that if he kept standing on the shore, they are not going to hear or understand what he is saying. Then he went into a boat, and then he went back so that he might talk to them and they will hear him. And then he started with this parable. He said there was a sower who took out his seed and he went to sow. And when he started sowing, he said some of his seed fell on the way, on the road. It was not about the hand of the sower. And it's not even about the seed. The problem was where that seed fell. And he said, as they fell on the wayside, he said, the birds of the air, they came and took that seed. And if you read in the Gospel of Luke, you realize that he added another aspect of it. He said, the people trampled on that seed. And the bird ate that seed. Here, they don't even tell us that there is a single one that got into the earth. The person who passed by one day later, they find that road or that path the way it used to be like two days ago. nothing has changed on that road you know the road continued being as it was that was the first place now the second place that is mentioned said there is another one that was on stony ground that fell on stony ground it is on stony ground or somewhere where there are stones those ones that fell there they found the shallow soil and they were very fast to spring to sprung. Probably the soil might have said this one's so fast. Probably he will have uh, bosses and say this ones are growing very fast. But one thing he didn't know was that the soil was very shallow. And because they were fast in growing, they didn't grow the roots down. They didn't have anywhere to grow the roots. And then few days later, the sun was up, there was coarsh, and they withered the way. And that was the end of those seeds. 
arangije aravuga ati iyo nkuru ntirangiriraho and he said the story does not end there dore ngo hari niza gatatu zagiye zigwa mu maho there is a third the third ones that fell into the thorns na zuzi tegereje and if you look at them zindi zambe they were better than the first ones kuberi kuko zarameze why because they grew up ariko zimereye hehe but where are they growing zimereye mu butaka bwa maho it is in the jambo ryimana rikavuga among thorns and the wangwa yakuranye nazo those thorns grew up with the seeds and they were stronger they choked that seed and then no stories about yielding and that was the end of those seeds and then he said there is a fourth type of story it says some fell on good ground and those ones Niza gatatu niza kabiri ndetse niza The outcome was different from the third Go. and second and first type of seed or type of soil. Because in that soil, kumera, they were able to grow zirera, and they yielded crops. Zarameze, they grew but they also yielded crops. Ngo imwe kajya yera 30 indi 60 indi 100. One will yield crops 30 fold or 60 fold or even 100 fold you might, you might ask yourself you read this parable and now you're talking about it what is it What's the point? i don't want to add a lot on what has been said because this is the only parable jesus has explained for others you say whoever has ears to hear let him hear the disciples asked if you have to understand this one better then explain to us maze Yes, I will mu magambo tujye gusoma. And Jesus explained it and we are going to read how he explained We are going to start from verse 13. Mariko uh, kane 13 uh, Mark chapter 4 verse 13 to verse 20. Ijambo ry'Imana riravuga ngo arababaza ati mbese ko mutazi by'uwo mugani indi migani yose muzayimenya mute and he said to them do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all the parables umubibyi nubibi jambo ry'Imana the sower sows the word izo munzira aho iryo jambo ribibwa abo nibo bamara kumva kumva uwo mwanya satana akaza agakura mu iryo jambo rya bibwe muri bo and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown when they hear satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts nizibibwe kukara nabo nuko iyo bumvise iryo jambo uwo mwanya baryemera banezere ariko kuko batagira imizi muri bo bakomera umwanya muto iyo habaye kwa maku cyangwa kurenga bazira iryo jambo uwo mwanya birabagusha this likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time afterwards when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake immediately they stumble ngabandi bagereranywa nizibibwa mu mahwa abo nibo bumva iryo jambo maza maganya yiyise nibihendo by'ubutunze nira riryo kwifuza ibindi iyo bibinjiye mu mutima binigi iryo jambo niryere now these are the ones sown among thorns they are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in shock the word and it becomes unfruitful kandi abagereranywa nazazindi zibibwe mu butaka bwiza abo nibo bumva iryo jambo bakaryemera nibo bera imbuto umwe 30 undi 60 undi jana bityo bityo imana yacishimwe but these are the ones sown on good grounds those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit some 30 fold some 60 and some 100 yesu ari gusobanura wa mugani ababwiye ngo ni mutumvuyo indi yose ni muzayumva Jesus is explaining this parable the one he told them if you don't understand this how are you going to understand Arabanza arababwira ngo ubiba burya nubiba ijambo He started telling them the sower sows the word 
iryo jambo ni niryo mbuto iba yabibwe that word is the seed that is sown ariko arangije aravuga ngo reka noneho mbasobanurire buri kiciro ibyacyo uko biteye but he told them now let me explain to you for every category aravuga ngo ikiciro cy'ambere say the first category ntabwo ari uko kiba kitaje gusenga it's not because they do not come to pray dukwiye gushimira nabo babaje rega we need to appreciate those who come babate intambwe because they have made a step ntabwo ari uko bataza mu rusengero it's not because they don't come ntabwo ari uko batumva ijambo it's not because they don't hear the bashobora no kuba bafite amakaye yo kwandika they might even have notebooks bashobora no kuba bateza amatwi bakureba gutyo ukabona bakureba they might even be looking at you intently but after hearing the word there is another man who comes he's called satan he will come and pick or collect every word that they had received because they are soiled their hearts they are there they are not soft you know a path is somewhere people pass by for a long time probably those uh, who live in cities they might not understand but in the rural areas you know it's very rare except now that development has reached there where we can agree on where we are going to make a road you know uh, the path is uh, made by those who pass there two people who pass by there two times and then the path will be there and when it's not you find some grass there and some roots. but when they pass there for a long time you realize that the path is really made if you want to sweep you can even sweep because it's solid it's hard what has gone through your heart and made you to be like a path or way Niki kinyura mu mitima yacu kikageraho kikikomeza igahinduka nk'urutare What is it that went through our heart that makes it solid hard like a rock Kugera ubwi jambo ry'Imana rivugwa to the point that the word of God is spoken, and it doesn't have anywhere to grow. it doesn't have anywhere to enter and it stays there on the surface and then the devil will be quick to come to you and he say why should you keep this even Sunday next Sunday are going and they will be talking about the same thing pastor will be there even the bible study will be there why do you have to keep this just go gather with others why do you have to be involved in other things and then what God has told you, you don't allow it to grow roots in you, but the devil comes and takes it from you. And it happens to us so many times. It just requires you to harden your heart a bit. Say that one. Pastor now are too jerish. Pastor, he's be, she's becoming. <sighs> Will they continue to talk about? <laughs> <those> <laughs> I thought they were going to talk about something else, and they keep talking about love. And then that makes your heart <laughs> to be like a path. It becomes hard. <laughs> <path. laughs> and every word that is spoken, it will just Satan take the surface. <laughs> and the devil will be like, "Oh, you don't want." Get in. Let me take it from you. Let me help you with this. I'm going to take it from you because you have closed your heart. You have hardened your heart. Just because you have closed your heart and say, "I'm not receiving this." You know, Jesus, He's Almighty. Yes, Jesus is almighty. But listen to what he's telling you now. He's telling you. For you to understand what I'm telling you. For it to be, it to be useful in your life. It requires the partnership between you and I. A partnership between you and I. 
If you have in your heart If you make it like uh, that path in the village The word will be spoken And it will reach somewhere But it won't be useful to your life in any way You stay the person you were This can help us understand why we have so many pagans in the church and who've been there for long. Not because the word has not been spoken. You know, sometimes you have a way of explaining that. It is time that is not yet there. See, one, the time is not yet there. But listen to what I'm telling you. Now. If you harden your heart, let me put it this way. God will help you to harden it even more. If you harden your heart, God will help you to harden it even more. If you want to know about that, ask a man. God told him, Let my people go. And then he was stubborn. He God said, Oh, you want they to be stubborn? You want to harden your heart? Let me help you. And he, God him. he told him so many times. And the the more he spoke, the more he was. The more he was defensive. You know when you want to fight with someone who is uh, someone who likes to fight, you just need to sparkle. You just need to provoke him in any way. When you provoke the person, their, their anger will be first to go up. And when you don't stop there, when you keep on provoking him, they will keep on being angrier. And that's what happens when it comes to having your heart. When God speaks one time, two times, three times, and you don't want to hear, he will speak so many times. And the more you become defensive, the more your heart becomes like a path. That thing is very crucial. And you'll understand it when we read the scripture. He said the first ones are the ones that fell on the wayside. And the devil came and took those seeds away. And he talked about the second one. He said the second one can be compared to those who hear the word and they receive, after hearing it, they are clapping. Say, praise Jesus. And when they come out of here, they come and say, oh, so God, you have blessed us. I hear it so often here. Some will tell me, you haven't taught recently, is it me that you want or you want the word? If you want the word, it's being spoken here, whether I'm here or not. But if you want to hear, you want to hear, you missed it because Lambert is just flesh and blood who is sustained by the grace of God. The second category, when they hear the word, they receive it with gladness. Say, oh, servant of God, you have blessed us today. We've been blessed. Hallelujah. And I'm even going to apply it. And they will go, they will, you know, you'll be so excited. And then very few days later, when they start being persecuted for the word, they will say, oh, this is not my thing. I'm not part of this, you know, I wasn't part of that initially. Let me tell you this. They come up, you know, we think that we are not persecuted for the word because in our country there is no persecution. But you know, after hearing the word, and you feel that you have understood it, you know, the test is not far. It is there, just 
pass that place and the test will be there. This one I can really stand by This one I'm teaching you After I teach the word, the following month, you know, I have to be alert because that's what I'm going to deal with. There is someone who says that God teaches us and then he, he, lets, uh, he lets the devil test us or try us. Check whether they have understood what I said. And then when you go out, going to implement or apply what you have in your heart, your boss will be like, uh, try not to do it the way we used to do it. And you say, but I had said that I'm not going to change. Do I need this job? Yes. And if I don't want, if I don't want to uh, cheat, uh, then it will be trouble. That's the persecution of this world. And keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. And then you say, Oh God, yourself, you know, I can't let go of this word. Please bear with me, look aside, but nothing else I can do. What I had told you before. What I said that I'm going to apply in my life this way, wait next time because this time it's not working, it's not possible. That means that the word is being persecuted. You're being persecuted for the word. You know, all of us when we are seated here, I was looking at how we are praising God, and I felt like we are in the spirit. And I was asking God, are you sure you gave me the right speech? You should have told me to go on with praise and worship. But God knows what he says. God knows his purpose. If he's saying, hey, watch your heart. It's because he knows that once we are out there, all the parade we're doing here will say, Amen. This was the actor acting in this drama. See you next time. Because when we are seated here, all of us feel that we are going to apply this work. But then the test is at home. The test is at your workplace. The test is you seated there at home alone. All those things that God has prepared about. Are you going to walk by those principles or you are going to leave them aside? This is what I heard God speaking in all these things. We need to choose to become disciples. But we cannot become disciples as long as we don't understand what God says and apply it. It becomes uh, but it's not helping us in any way. God bless the pastor. Last Sunday I was out there in the service because that's where my daughter wanted to stand. But I heard. And when we got home with my wife, we started going through uh, the things we had heard and we found that there are things we need to correct. And we said we are not going to wait for another week to come. Let us start today and start applying it today. Why? Because it's of no use hearing a lot if you can't apply one thing. At one point, he becomes so much. So, so it can become so much and it causes indigestion. And you start having gases. And you just become bloated because you're not using all that. You know, the food that you're not digesting, it's of no use. 
It's of no use to you. Yes, Jesus said the second category. They are the people who hear the word with gladness and excitement. You know, in Omega, you don't know how to be excited for the word. In other places, they will stand and say, Preach, Pastor. And people take their seats and they start moving them. But wait for them when they get out there. What happens? You know, there is a preacher we have in this country, and sometimes you don't know he's a preacher. His Excellence, the President of the Republic. Uh, recently, Rick Warren came to this country. He so well, and there were different kinds of leaders. And then uh, the one who called, uh, who gave the altar call, uh, when I look at it in my own perspective, I will say it's the, the speech by His Excellence, the President. He said, learning is one thing, but applying, that's the key of everything. He said, that's where everything gets wrong. And reminded us some powerful words. He said, the gospel was being preached before 94. But what happened? Where things got wrong, let me tell you. There is a difference between what people learn and what they do. Like there is a disconnection. It's not connected. Sometimes I say words that I think that's but I want you to think, to reflect about it. When you hear things in the church, and you go out where you're supposed to apply it and you you hear your clients and you even went out and told me that I bless you. You know what you have done? It's a drummer. It's a drummer. Do you know what happens in a drum? A man called Mikesh, what's called this man? He has been in so many dramas as an actor. But what he played is not what he is in real life. He might act a certain uh, per 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 person and then you feel that he did it right, but when you find them at home, you find that he is Muche Shabatkwe Dismas. Sometimes that what happens in our churches. Sometimes that what happens in our gatherings. We come and hear. We come and feel edified. And we say, we are going to be transformed. But if you are not being transformed. There is a missing part. Somehow it's not connected, so disconnected. Sometimes I think that I'm going to stop teaching and be like a preacher I heard of in Brazil. There is a pastor who taught one teaching and then he will repeat the same teaching the next week and he will repeat the same the following week and then the pastor, Christians pastor, came, the members of the church say, why don't you change? Please, teach us something else. He said, you asked me the wrong question. First, show me that you have and heard what I told you, and you're applying it. I told you that I was going to do something else. And then you tell me, we have heard that lesson, we have applied it now, teach us something else. Because there is a disease we have. <laughs> called being blessed or edified. Impressionability. Which is the difference. To, to be impressed, oh yeah, yeah, do as I We'll be so impressed and say, oh, we've been edified. Jeremiah uh, said we became like a song for you. They come to hear a song. But God is saying, careful, don't continue to be a land or soil that is not fruitful. 
Yesu Kristo avuga ikiciro cyagatatu. Jesus Christ talked about the third part. Ngo imbuto zigereranywa nizaguye mu mahwa. Uh, it's like the seed that fell among thorns. Bavuga ati abantu naho babakoze for ikomeye. These people they have done a great deal. Abaje ku jambo rivugirwa. They came where the word is being. Ikigeretse kuri ibyo bararyumva bakaritega matwi. Even more to that they hear and they they are attentive to that word. Yesu yongera hi jambo rikomeye ryitwa ngo ariko. Jesus added a powerful word which is but Ariko. but ngo ibi bintu bitatu bibagezeho when these three things come to them nabo barangiza bakabikingurira imitima yabo and they open their hearts to those things ngo birangira binizi jambo they will end up choking the world ibyo bintu bitatu nibi these are the three things ngo namaganya yise the cares of this world mama say oh Oh, what's going to happen? I don't know if I'm going to see it the other day. Oh, this year is so tough. Oh, Lord, let me see the other day. The, day, the cares of this world. The second is the deceitfulness of riches. The third is the desire for other things. If you want to say it in one word, you might call it not being content for dissatisfaction, not being satisfied. Because having a heart that is not content, it causes us to make ways in different things. It causes us to do wrong things yeah, saying, uh, having the excuse that even others do the same. Uh, Fred, who is in business, they will say there is a way businesses are done here in Rwanda. Uh, people who are in religious uh, organizations like me, we say this is how you operate in the atmosphere of Rwanda. When God speaks, I will try to rationalize. We have another way we do. And when you look at what God is asking you, you say, why don't you ask it to other Isn't it Pastor JP? Because there are things God has been asking Romans. It became like the kidney of the Pope. Everyone don't want to be involved in that. Especially in the church. Only God will have mercy on us. God will speak and we hear. And we are on fire. fire, 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 fire. We are on fire. And then when you remember that your child needs to be You see someone slowing down saying, what, what if? Because what God has said, it is shocked by the, the, the cares of this world, the desires, the, the need for so many things. Let me tell you my, my, my pain. Do you remember a man called Mulinde who came here? The words he spoke in this church I bought CDs. I have kept them. Anyone remembers what he said? Let me help you. Say, Church of Rwanda. We extend a hand of partnership. Let us work together so that the desires, the plan of God in this nation might happen or come to fulfillment. What did he tell us first? There is a place they went, they gave the hand of partnership with the church and the church accepted. And after that, their countries were blessed because they heard what God was saying. He said there are other countries we went to. We gave them the hand of partnership. 
because God had sent us there. But they didn't receive that. And what happened later was really bad. Let me put it this way. I can confirm without a shadow of a doubt that some of the problems between Rwanda and Uganda, our, the church will have our hand in that. There is a place we did not stand. And it's all, it's all because of the braid. Uh, if I plan uh, prayers and I don't preach, what's going to happen? Who is going to accept to coordinate so that we can come together and pray? Beloved. I can say this. You might think that it's just things I'm talking about, but it's on us and we can't escape from it. You know, we can point fingers to others, but really we need to feel defeated. The cares of this world, saying the cost is too great it's too much. the cost is too much the cost of obeying God in this world I'm not ready to pay it. if I pay it there are other things that might be done my son won't be going to church anymore to school anymore my status will be affected but I tell you the truth there are things that God holds us accountable for. There are things that God holds us accountable for. There are things that God says, but it is choked by life, the cares of our life. May God forgive us. May God help us. And my prayer is to say, that I wish someone might hear your word today. I wish today I might hear your word. And leave aside all those petty things. God is saddened, he's grieved. When he speaks, he speaks. And we don't implement, we don't apply. Who are we waiting for who will come to speak to us? But there are other seeds that fell on good ground. Those ones are the ones who receive the word. They receive the word in themselves. They are accepted to be uh, convicted by the word. And they say, I accept to pay the price. I like to tell you some of the things I love with Jesus. It's because he doesn't hide from us the cost that is involved or the price we have to pay in obeying what he asks us. When someone gives you a job, sometimes they don't tell you everything. Because if they tell you what is awaiting, you might just decide to leave them. But Jesus says, do you want to follow me? Uh, deny yourself. Take your cross. And then follow me. Because applying what I'm telling you, it's going to require you to pay Ariko the price. But if you accept to pay the price, you bear fruits. Some they will bear fruits. Others will pay fruits. Others will pay sixty, even hundred for others. What do we learn from this? Let me read two scriptures. And those scriptures are going to help us. The first, it is still in the same chapter 4. Verse 24 and 25. Verse 24 and 25. 
kandu dafite azakwa nicyo yarafite and he then he said to them take heed what you hear with the same measure you use it will be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given for whoever has to him more will be given but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him komwitondere ibyo mwumva say take heed to what you hear mwitondere ibyo mwumva Take heed to what you hear. Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you use hearing and apply the same measure will be used to you but for you bringing to your righteousness and helping you to fulfill the purpose of your life. The one he created you for. Let me rephrase it. urugero rwo guhinduka ikimana yakuremeye the measure of transformation to what god has created you for ntabwo ruri mu mubare w'amateraniro witabira it is not the number of services you attend ruri mu ngano yuko umva ijambo ry'imana ukarishyira mu bikorwa it is in the measure of how much you hear the word of god and apply it Let me repeat. Urugero rwo guhinduka ikimana yakuremeye rwawe. Your measure of transformation into what God has created you for. Ntabwo ruri mu mubare w'amateraniro witabira. It is not in the number of services you attend. Ntabwo ruri mu bintu ukora mu sengero cyangwa n'ahandi ukorera imana. Things you do whether in church or other places where you serve God. Ruri mu kigero cyibyo wumva imana ikubwira ukabishyira mu bikorwa it is in the measure of what you hear god speaking to you and you apply it ibyo tudashyira mu bikorwa everything we do not apply twaba tubizi twaba tubibwiriza whether we know it or even preach about it ibyo ngibyo bijya muri negative that one is useless it's negative let me rephrase it you are responsible of the measure of your righteousness ni wowe responsable y'urugero rwo gukiranuka kwawe you're responsible for the measure of your righteousness man iravuga ngo god says ndebe uko wumva ah Look at how you hear. Nkareba ikigero wabishyize mu bikorwa. And the measure of how you apply it. Hanyuma nange. And then nkagufasha guhinduka ikimana icyo nakuremeye. I help you to become what I have created you for in the measure of your obedience. Ijambo ryo ngiye ijambo rikomeye riravuga ngo. And the word has added something else. Ufit. <laughs> to him who has. More will be given to him. Gwari kwa undu dafite. But the one who does not have even what he thought he has will be taken away from him. Beloved, we need to ask ourselves what is the measure of our obedience? Learning is one thing. Having a good program is something else. But applying yamvuga ngo imana is impamvu hari ibintu bimwe itampamagarira cyangwa sitarampamagarira God knows the reason why he hasn't called me for certain things yet Fit urusengero hari umunsi nahagarika kwigisha If I had the church one day I was stop teaching tukajya duhura ku cyumweru tukavuga ngo hari ubushize twize iki And we we'll meet on Sunday we we'll say what did we learn last week Ugeze ho ubishyira mu bikorwa How far are you applying that Nange nk'umushumba nkababwira aho ngeze mbishyira mu bikorwa And as a pastor I will tell you how I've been applying that Kugira ngo tuve muri theory So that we we'll leave those theories Theories zirashoboka Because theories are possible Ariko pratique But the practical part of it Niho ruzinge That's the key Mvaba heurayo Now listen to what Hebrews say. And then we're going to pray. Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to read verse 7 and 8. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 
ngo kuko dore iyo ubutaka bwa nyo y'imvura yabuguyeho kenshi bukamera bukamera mu imyaka igirira kamaro ababuhingirwa buhabwa numugisha buhabwa n'Imana umugisha ariko niba bumeramo amahwa nibitovu wabuhinyutse bugeze hafi yo kuvumwa kandi amaherezo yabwo no gutwikwa the bible says for the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from god but if it bears thorns and briars it is rejected the near to being cursed whose end is to be burned nanicyo nanarenza hukura ayo magambo i'm not going to add anything on these words kwera ko twumvise byinshi because you have heard so much tubwirwa byinshi and we have been told so much kwimana iratubaza ikibazo kimwe but god is asking us one question turubuhe bwo kubwa ubutaka what type of soil are we turubuhe bwo kubwa ubutaka what type of soil are we ese dushyira mu bikorwa kuruhe rugero at what measure do we apply what we learn let me give you a practical question that you need to think about how far are we into the journey of becoming disciples since the of the year we have always had regular services yewe ko niyo ka friday aje twabite ipine bikaza nyuma even when you have ka friday we have moved the hours ko babimanitse hariya ngo duhinduka bigishwa and they have put it there for us to become disciples ko badahwema kutubwiriza and they teach us they preach to us every day ko mwakugeze hagati and we are at the uh, half of the year twikoreye evaluation buri wese if we do a self assessment for each one turahinduka are we being transformed ibyo twumva biraduhindura uh do we hear what you hear does it transform us tugeze he how far we bavandimwe ntabwo ko mvuga ngo ntiduhinduka it is not that i say that we are not being transformed ariko ikintu numvise imana iri kutubaza but what i heard god asking us is gufata umwanya wa auto evaluation is to take time for self, self assessment dushobora kongera aho ibindi byinshi tukabwiriza we can add so many things we can preach ariko biba byiza gufata umwanya wa evaluation but it is very important for us to take time for assessment narumvise say god you have spoken i have heard. have i applied and what is the reason why i haven't applied what you told me nahubundi otherwise twaza hindura imana indondogose ah we have god keep speaking speaking to us nyamara irifuza ko duhinduka and yet he wants us to be transformed tufata kanya buri wese yisengere let us take time for everyone to pray for themselves ugira ibibazo bazima and you can ask god some questions ugira ibibazo bazu mutima wawe ask your heart some questions hanyuma ugira icyo usubiza kwijambo maze kumva and then you answer uh, according to the word you have heard
Nami Trakutiani. Lord, we need you. To a very hot quahin to Tsumutaka, amazing incident. Please forgive us where we became a soil that isn't fruitful. To Ziba Matqui, to Kwanga Kumva, to Queen Angiri Miti Mayach. Kawe 